And this one, they were rap genius. They weren't just genius. It was rap genius. And the owner of rap genius was like, yo, you know, we started rap genius because of your lyrics. Was he just egging me on to just make me feel a certain type of way? Or was he dead serious? I think his name was Noah. Shout out to Noah. Oh, yeah. There you go. I, I, I was never here. See my hair. I never come. I would grow up, get a Rolex and a yellow hair and bone. I don't switch up. Just don't pick up. I don't know that telephone. Looks just like yours, but it's vice lords. If I rock with an unknown, you ain't that. In the first episode in this new series, we're going to be giving flowers and celebrating the career of Chicago's very own Lupe Fiasco. I've listened to so much hip hop over the years and can honestly say, for me personally, no other rapper has had me digging into their lyrics more than him. There is something about his music that just simply fascinates me. His wordplay is often phenomenal and he'll have me checking Rap Genius or YouTube vids for lyric breakdowns and stuff. I feel he helps educate through his music and so much more. But we'll come back to this man's pin game and intelligence later in the video. Love for it is the reason that I have become this praised. That's definitely Shakespeare. You sure? Who else? Man, you're wrong again. That's Lupe Fiasco put you on game. I see I'm gonna have to put both of y'all on game, man. Lupe was born in Chicago, Illinois and is West African descent. He is one of nine children of Shirley, a chef, and his father, Gregory, an engineer. Gregory, a member of the Black Panther Party, was a prolific African drummer, karate teacher, operating plant engineer, and owner of karate schools and army surplus stores. Fiasco was raised Muslim on the west side of Chicago on Madison Terrace housing project. At the age of three, Fiasco began taking martial art classes. His parents divorced when he was five, and he went on to live with his mother, but his father still remained an important part of his life. In sixth grade, Lupe went to live with his father full time in Harvey, Illinois. His father lived next door to a crack house and taught Fiasco to use guns to defend himself from drug dealers. Despite his unstable upbringing, Fiasco states that he was well-educated as a child, asserting that his parents exposed him to a diverse array of subjects and that reading was highly encouraged in his household. He also previously said that cable TV wasn't allowed in the house, so that his family couldn't be brainwashed by channels such as MTV. Are we apps or are we bodies filled with apparitions? Operating applications stuck inside an Apple prison. Chicken hacking down low updates that lack religion. All. Lupe initially disliked hip hop music for its use of vulgarity and preferred to listen to jazz. He idolized clarinet player Benny Goodman. His struggle to learn to play an instrument led him to create poetry instead, which led to his interest in the lyrical aspects of his music. He began rapping his poems in the eighth grade, and upon hearing Nas' 1996 album, it was written, began to pursue hip hop. While attending Thornton Township High School, Fiasco met gang member Bishop G. The two became friends due to their shared interest in music. He thought Lupe was a nerd, but he liked him anyway. Fiasco's father allowed him and Bishop to make mixtapes in his basement, and the two gained notoriety at the school for their music. However, they were kicked off stage during their first performance because their musical style was not embraced by the hip hop community. And I don't wanna be Big Meech or Larry Hoover. I wanna be Martin Luther King Jr. Early in his career, he went by stage names Little Lou and Lou the Underdog. Growing up, Fiasco was given the nickname Lou the last part of his first name by his mother. Lupe is an extension of this nickname, which he borrowed from a friend from high school. Fiasco is a reference to the firm song, Firm Fiasco. The rapper said he liked the way it looked on paper. After high school, instead of applying to college, Lupe committed himself to music. He formed a group with three other Chicagoans, Sosa Karan, D'Lo, and Navi. They signed a deal with Epic and went on to release just one single, called armpits. Then on on uh uh lights on and pistols stop fronting why I chase birds like road runner for phone numbers I be in the back with bone crushes and no hustlers. And then Jay-Z came calling. Lupe started going to baseline studios in New York. This is around the time Jay started recording the black album. There are long-standing rumors that Lupe was an uncredited writer in some of these sessions. In the years since he has both denied that he ever ghost wrote for Jay, per se, and said that he gave him joints for the album. 
you know, being able to go to the baseline and see him put together joints like the Black Album and stuff like that was very, and be a part of that, give him joints for that. There was talk of Lupe signing to Rockefeller, but he and Chili decided to form first and 15, 50-50 down the middle. One of his first self-recorded tracks, which could have been, which described the career options he could have pursued had he not begun rapping. It was released as a demo tape and discovered by MTV, despite the fact that no video was created for the song. After L.A. Reid left Arista Records, there was no one left to funnel attention and resources to a virtuosic but untested kid without an obvious hit in the vault. He became a free agent again. This is where Jay-Z came back into the picture. In an interview he gave to Hip Hop DX a few years ago, Chili said that Jay told him privately that he was about to accept a job as president of Atlantic Records and that Lupe would be a priority artist at the label. Shortly after Jay-Z was offered the president job at Def Jam, which he accepted, this, in turn, left Lupe in a situation as his label had little leverage. Later, when it was time to work Kick Push at radio, Chili refinanced his home so he could pay for the promotion himself. Lupe did what artists as famous as UGK at 50 Cent or disaffected as Joe Budden had done when their labels left them in limbo. He turned to mixtapes. Before mixtapes were de facto albums, they served as a sampler of what a rapper might be able to do with more time, greater resources, or bigger sampling budget. While Lupe was working on his debut solo album, he released his mixtape series, Fahrenheit 115 over the internet, which gained quite a buzz. His remix of Kanye West's Diamonds track caught the attention of Kanye, which then led to him appearing on the hit, Touch the Sky. This prompted Kick Push to be released earlier than expected, and the rest is history. Surely one of the most cerebral and enzymatic artists active since the mid-2000s, he is also among the more prominent artists in his field, as proven by Grammy recognition and several gold and platinum certifications. A career that has entailed seven albums, highlighted by the top 10 releases, Lupe Fiasco's Food and Liquor, the chart-topping Lasers in 2011, and Food and Liquor 2, the great American rap album, Part one in 2012. You look like a package of hot dogs on crack. Oh. You look like something on smack. I thought that I saw you on smack. Everything you ever said was mother oh. whack. You really wish that you was mother black. And you really wish that you was mother that. Oh. Although Lupe specializes in complex narratives and creative metaphorical verses, he hasn't shied away from making singles with pop appeal including the top 10's Superstar and the show goes on. After a decade of off-the-strained relations with major label Atlantic, it took a turn that ended in controversial circumstances. In mid-July 2010, he tweeted that he had submitted his long-delayed and much-anticipated third album Lasers to his record label, Atlantic, and that its release was, as he said, out of my hands, guys and gals. It's done, and that's all I can tell you. When they drop it, they drop it. Two months and one awesome leak track later, there was still no news of a Lasers release date, and Lupe lovers were getting anxious, despite an Atlantic tweet aimed at appeasing them. Anxious enough to start a riot, sort of. After a web petition 28,979 strong, they planned to take to the streets on October 15th for what they dubbed Fiasco Friday and held a protest outside Atlantic Records, New York headquarters. Prior to the protest, Lupe announced he'd be there too. What's the, what's the chant? What are we doing? Let's go, Lasers! 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 Once that was all over, he gained a newfound level of creative independence and has gone on to release more mixtapes, EPs, and three more albums. The first of the three albums was Tetsuo and Youth, which is my favorite Lupe album. I know that might be controversial to other Lupe fans, but it's simply just my personal preference. I wasn't a massive fan of the next release in Droga's Light. There were some decent tracks, but I was left feeling rather underwhelmed, if I'm honest. Then we come to Droga's Wave, which for me is another superb album from Lupe. 
I feel like this album was kind of slept on by the masses and went a bit under the radar. I would highly recommend checking this album out. Jasmine necklace from a poor woman on Hindu streets. I gave her Rupert, she gave me beauty, I took the creep. I think it's important to discuss how much of a genius Lupe is regarding his lyrics. There are not many out there like him. Fiasco has been credited as a pioneer of the conscious hip hop movement, which focuses on social issues. Subjects touched upon on Lupe's fiasco food and liquor include absent parents, terrorism, Islam and religion, war, and prostitution. What's up with Lupe? What category you put put? Definitely, definitely lyrical miracle, but um, he's just fucking, he's fucking. Oh, the more I hear lyrical miracle, it's like, damn, yeah, bro. Nah, but he's <laughs> fucking, yeah. he's fucking crazy, man. Yeah. He's incredible. Right. He's, he's that good. Fiasco attributes his interest in social issues to his highly cultured upbringing. As he describes, his mother was very intellectual and his father was a renaissance man. He rejects the misogyny common in hip hop, which he discusses in the song, Hurt Me Soul. In the word bitch, cursing I wouldn't say it, me and dog couldn't relate to the bitch I dated. Despite this, Fiasco is strongly opposed to censorship in music. If we are going to censor offensive things, then we are going to have to blind and deafen everyone. Come on, man. Let's focus on education and literacy and poverty. Lupe employs various lyrical techniques in his songwriting. The rapper views hip hop as a medium conducive to storytelling, a primary element of his lyrics due to his background in So theory. I got punches that I, that still people don't understand, right? For example, I put up a freestyle uh, of me rapping to Nas is like, and there's a line in there where I say, uh, coolest, coolest little, coolest, coolest, coolest black boy in the ghetto. Hmm. The so, references that H&M had, where they had the little boy, was the coolest little monkey in the jungle. The black kid and everybody got, went crazy over the hoodie. And, yeah. and so, hmm, is H&M, right? What does H&M spell? Hmm, right? But it's also, hmm, like, hmm. So when you listen to that, coolest little black boy in the ghetto, the coolest little black boy in the ghetto, of course, you flip ghetto to what? The concrete jungle. So you're flipping jungle. You're still using it. Black boy, all that, whatever, right? He wrote plays as a child which had a strong effect on his songwriting approaches. He utilizes both metaphors and literal statements in his work, which he describes as getting from point A to point B in a few words as possible. My rap position was black condition and activism, ammunition for abolition, missions attacking systems, but they not have to listen, let's just drop in no activism. His use of metaphors is exemplified by the song Gotta Eat from Lupe Fiasco's The Cool which is told from the perspective of a cheeseburger and addresses the poor nutrition in black communities in the United States while using a continuous metaphor of drug dealing and hustling. I went to church on a Sunday and saw a deep fry. Said he had beef and people want him dead. He loved the hungry ones, was only scared of the feds. He His lyrical fat. prowess is pretty exceptional. He is so grounded regarding the components and is able to display his thoughts effortlessly. But yet, his wordplay still marvels you. The way he flips words is just amazing. I will go as far to say he is probably the purest lyricist there is. Now how do we proceed? Knowing due to man's fatalism, it probably you'll never leave a disease. Trying to cure its own symptoms with disease. Creating an epidemic just to see if it can be. On October 30th, 2017, Lupe Fiasco made a claim saying he had never been the greatest rapper. But regarding his lyrics, he tweeted, when it comes to lyrics, which is one thing I care about, you'd be hard pressed to say, I'm not one of the best ever. To be honest, you would be a fool to argue with him. Sometimes rappers put themselves in a position where they feel that they're above everybody and they forget the millions of MCs right. that will chew their ass up. Everybody. This goes you for Jay-Z, Eminem, me, Kanye, everybody. You know, and just because we got platinum plaques and we got songs, don't think that there's a little guy yeah. not running around somewhere in L.A. or Houston who destroy us. Except, and it's know. not like, oh, man, Lupe. Blah, blah, blah. It's really just like, no, that's the truth. To Lupe from the Hip Hop Doc, this is me personally giving you your flowers and thanking you for all the years contributing to hip hop and other aspects of life. One of the greatest to ever do it. And long may you continue to do it. Thanks for watching, guys.
and please like and subscribe so we can keep bringing you new content. Peace.